So what is a tensor? You probably have learned something called stress tensor from fluid dynamics and field tensor from electrodynamics. Sounds like it has something to do with dynamics. Let me explain the mathematical meanings of a tensor for physics and engineering students. So we have the following mathematical structures. This is a rank 0 tensor. This is rank 1 tensor. And this is rank 2 tensor. This is rank 3 tensor. You see how the number of indices increases with the ranked numbers? So going back, this is just a number, right? We could assign a variable x to it. It's a scalar quantity. Yes, rank 0 tensor is also called a scalar that we all know. This is an array of numbers. So we now need an index mu to indicate which element we are talking about. And this was rank 1 tensor. Rank 1 tensor is also called a vector. Here, we have a row and a column, so we need two indices mu and nu to describe all the elements. And this was a rank 2 tensor. And we also call it a matrix. And here, we need three indices to assign positions. And this was a rank 3 tensor, right? And this is just a tensor. Okay, let's review. What rank tensor was this? rank 3 tensor. But how about this one? You know, you'll start seeing some indices down here as well. What rank should this one be? It's still rank 3, because there are 3 indices. Now I'll tell you a more formal way. Numbering the ranks like this is, I would say, the undergrad level. The graduate level is this. So we separate the top and the bottom indices. So the first one is rank 3,0, because there are 3 indices on top. And the second one is rank 1, 2, because one index on top and two indices on the bottom. Nothing hard or confusing, right? For example, example 1, what rank should this be? It's a rank 3,2 tensor, obviously. And example 2, how about this one? No indices on top, so this is just rank 0,4 tensor. All good? So, what rank is this? Rank 2, 0 tensor, right? Because there are two indices on top. Whether it's the top index or the bottom index, the first index is usually the row index. And the second index is usually the column index. And normally, people start the index number from 0. All right, let me quickly test you. Which element is this? x1, 0. So row is 1 and column is 0. 1 and 0. It's 2. How about x2, 2? Row with 2 and column with 2, so 2, 2 is negative 1. And how about x0, 2? Row is 0 and column is 2, so 0, 2, it's 7. All good? Okay, so we're getting used to the notation now. Let's think about these ranked numbers. What would these ranked numbers correspond to? Some people would guess those numbers represent the numbers of dimensions. So rank 0 tensor is about 0 dimensional world. Rank 1 tensor is about 1 dimensional world. Rank 2 is about 2D world. And rank 3 is about 3D world. But is that true? Do tensor ranks represent the numbers of dimensions? No, that thought is wrong. I mean, think about this vector. Normally these are x component, y component, and z component, right? We use vectors in 3D, so because the rank is 1, we are saying that it's 1D is wrong. Rank 1 clearly doesn't mean 1 dimension. So it seems the rank number has nothing much to do with the world dimensions. Then if the rank is increasing, what is really increasing? To understand this, let's bring up some tensors. One nice example of tensors is a stress tensor from fluid dynamics. Let's look at this box. You know, perpendicular force over area is pressure, right? Then what is the pressure given on this box? 120 newtons divided by 15 meters squared, so 8 pascals. It's just high school stuff. But what if the force was not perpendicularly applied to the surface? We'll have to only consider the normal component of the force, right? So 120 newtons times cosine of 30 degrees divided by 15 meters squared which should be 4 squared of 3 pascals. So this much of pressure was given on the top surface. But is that it in real life? 
with this box fail being pushed downward only? How about the parallel force component? Does it not affect the box at all? Of course it does. This whole thing is a single object. What I just said is important. It's a single object. So in reality, the box as a whole will also feel being pushed to the right. The force wasn't just applied to the top surface, but it was actually applied to the object. And depending on the stretchiness of the material, the object could bend a little or a lot to the right. As we now all agree that the parallel force component should somehow affect the box as well, we could think of that as a kind of side pressure. Let's calculate it. So the parallel component of the force divided by the surface that was applied to is 4 pascals. This side pressure is also called stress. So as you can see, I have the xyz axis that I defined for this example. So according to that, P is the z component of the force divided by the area with its normal in the z direction. So sigma zz. And this one is the y component of the force divided by the same area with its normal in the z direction, right? Sigma yz. So, I put the stress elements here. We can have a matrix that consists of stress elements, like this. And the first index mu could correspond to the force direction, and the second index nu could correspond to the area's normal direction. If you think about it, there could be 9 different combinations. If I plug in those numbers, it should look like this. Make sense? So sigma xx, yy, and zz are the pressures, which are also called normal stresses, and the rest are just called stresses, or shear stresses. So it just means non-diagonal pressure elements. You could think of this as our parents who are right above us giving us a pressure, but at the same time, side issues like school or workplace give us stresses. Yeah, I believe this is where the word stress is coming from. But anyway. So stress elements are generated by dividing force by area. And if we think about the unit, it's newtons per meter squared. So that is the same thing as Pascal. And what rank is this tensor again? Rank 2, because there are two indices and each index corresponds to a physical quantity, right? So this tensor describes something using two physical quantities, forces and areas in 3D. So having described by two physical quantities has to do with rank two, not the number of dimensions. Let me bring another example, energy stress tensor. Here is the four by four energy stress tensor. You'll learn this in GR. First of all, what rank is this tensor? 2. And how many dimensions are shown? 4. So now we have added the time component as well, because time is regarded as another spatial dimension if it's multiplied by the speed of light, c. So it could be the fourth dimension. And as we have the additional dimension, we need to multiply the row and the column by the extra dimension as well. So the row now corresponds to different components of energy, not force. And the column now corresponds to the volumes instead of the areas. But if you think about it, energy divided by the volume will still have the unit of stress or pressure. So that's why it's called the energy stress tensor. It's a stress tensor expressed in terms of energy, okay? So this is a rank 0 2 tensor, and it describes stress with two physical quantities in 4D. As I said, the rank number doesn't have to do with the number of dimensions. By the way, if you think in this way, the previous stress tensor should have perhaps been called force stress tensor or something. It would make more sense, no? Anyway, so this was the energy stress tensor. And some of you may be wondering, energy is a scalar quantity. How can we even assign a direction to energy in the first place? Like, this rule doesn't quite make sense. Let's divide both the row and the column by four velocity vector, which should give directions. So it's like a particle with some energy traveling at some speed. Because we divided both the row and the column, the velocities will be canceled anyway, so it's all good. But now, look at this numerator. Energy over velocity is kilogram meter squared per second squared times second over meter. 
which should give kilograms times meters per second. And what is this? Momentum. It's the same tensor, but it's just in terms of momentum now. The energy stress tensor is also called momentum stress tensor. Then should we not use the name energy stress tensor anymore? And just use the name momentum stress tensor? No, we can still call it the energy stress tensor, even if energy isn't a vector quantity. Why is that? From special relativity, if time component is treated as another dimension when multiplied by the speed of light, time is just another type of direction. So in 4D, at least in terms of time, energy can also be a vector quantity. So usually, the first row of the tensor, which is the time component of the energy, if we say the row direction component corresponds to the energy, can still be expressed in terms of energy, because we do say energy has direction in time. And the rest three rows are expressed in terms of momentum. But this tensor is still about the pressure. All the elements have the unit of Pascal. Now, back to these ones. Now you can see that these are just all 3D tensors. So, if the rank is increasing, what's really increasing? Not the number of dimensions, but the number of physical quantities that you're using to describe the tensor. To be more precise, the number of directional contributions by the physical quantities is increasing. So in here, we have force and area, so two directional contributions. As a final, I could perhaps show some examples so we can review what we just learned. What is this tensor? It's a rank 2, 0 tensor in 3D. And how about this one? That's rank 1, 1 tensor in 2D. And what's the last one? It's a rank 2, 1 tensor in 5D. You get the idea now? This is a bonus fact about the tensor. If this tensor is described by the two physical quantities, that means that tensor can act as a connection bridge between those two physical quantities as well. If we write this in the rank 2 tensor form or the matrix form, it should look like this, right? And from linear algebra, we also call this a transformation matrix or a transformation tensor. You remember? Let's bring back our previous example. So if we use this tensor as a transformation matrix, force is pressure times area, right? So the equation will be this. Let's plug in our numbers. You'll see that we get back those force components, which the overall magnitude is 120 Newton. This was possible because our stress tensor was described by the force and the area, which means we could use that as a transformation matrix for the force and area. So, that was all the mathematical meanings of tensor and its rank that I wanted to explain you. Alright, and for GR student, you may be asking, is tensor that important in GR? Why do we have to learn tensors? Do you recognize this equation? It's the final destination in GR. Einstein's field equation. And look, 